Charlie. That was the winter Jim Thorpe's world changed forever. When Jim and Charlie were eight years old, measles and typhoid fever swept through the Sock and Fox Agency School in Oklahoma. Young teacher Harriet Patrick spent long days and nights moving from one sick child to the next. I took care of them, giving them medicine every hour, she remembered. But by the time I had made the rounds, it was time to begin again. Jim escaped the serious illness, but Charlie developed a dangerous case of pneumonia. Harriet Patrick sent for the boy's parents. Charlotte and Hiram hurried to the school and rushed into the room that was being used as a makeshift hospital. Dozens of students laid suffering in beds, hot packs on their chest, coughing ceaselessly. Patrick asked the Thorpes to keep the fire going on the stove while she got some rest. Jim joined his parents. They sat together by Charlie's bed. At some point in the night, they fell asleep. At five the next morning, Patrick returned. She looked at Charlie. He was barely breathing. I went to him and took him in my arms, she recalled. She sent for a doctor, but the poor little fellow just lay back and died. Jim woke to see the teacher holding Charlie's lifeless body. Hiram and Charlotte took Jim home. Devastated by his brother's death, Jim walked into the woods. He needed to be alone, or maybe not quite alone. I asked my father where he got all his strength. Jim Thorpe's son Jack would say many years later. He said he had inherited it all from his brother. When his brother passed away, he got his strength. He just felt Charlie was with him all the time. Jim camped in the forest. He fished, he hunted, and earned money selling raccoon and skunk pelts. Charlotte and Hiram allowed for it for a while. Then they dragged him back to school. Jim had always been quiet. Now he was completely withdrawn. He sat in class, ignoring the teacher, lost in his own thoughts. He ran away in the spring, hiking those familiar 23 miles to his home. His father met him at the door, turned him right around, and drove him back to school. Hiram headed back home. So did Jim. But I took a shortcut, Jim recalled which shortened the distance to 18 miles, running all the way. When he got home this time, it was I who met him at the door. Hiram was done. He told Jim, Now I'm going to send you so far away from home, you'll never find your way back.